Coming up on this week's Falcon Fever, the men and women's soccer teams are still flying high. Find out what honor this duo of soccer players just picked up. And the women's volleyball team hosts their Dig Pink match, benefiting a great cause. Plus, our player of the week captured the men's golf 2012 Alabama Open. His story and more on this week's Falcon Fever. Welcome to Falcon Fever. I'm Michael Artris. And I'm Casey Beasley. Thanks so much for joining us. Casey, we have a lot of sports to cover this week. Montevallo has been busy. They have. We have a lot of interviews and great stories. Well, let's we'll start off. Kicking off with soccer. The men's soccer team won its second consecutive Peach Belt Conference match Wednesday, October 10th after knocking off visiting Georgia Southwestern State University 2-0 at Varsity Field. Jackson Tolleson and Pierre Omanga each scored second-half goals to help the Falcons pick up their fifth conference win of the season. Then on October 13th, the men traveled to South Carolina to play USC Aiken in what would prove to be a test of endurance. The game went into double overtime when finally the Fal Falcons broke a scoreless tie in the final minutes to grab a 1-0 victory. Sophomore Pedro Carnero scored the go-ahead goal in the 107th minute off of an assist from junior Gary O'Neill. Goalkeeper Brennan Ledgeway finished with seven saves and posted his seventh shutout of the season. The next day, the men challenged Mount Olive College and went into double overtime again. This time, the Falcons could not manage to net the game winner and ended with a 1-1 draw. Senior Shane Howard was a lone scorer for UM, while goalkeeper Brennan Ledgeway finished with two saves in the match. The men return home to play Concordia Selma October 22nd and wrap up the regular season against Young Harris at Varsity Field on October 27th. Now, right before our show began, the new rankings were released, and the men's soccer team is ranked sixth among D2 schools in the Southeast region. That is phenomenal. They've had a fantastic season. You know, they've had a lot of individual and team success so far. Great job, guys. The women's soccer team is energized after breaking a five-game losing streak. On October 10th, the women faced PBC opponent Georgia Southwestern. The Falcons dominated the game with a 7-0 score. Brittany Woodhouse got the first two goals of the game, which put the Falcons on the path to defeat the Hurricanes. This game helped the women to get an, over a five-game losing streak. After shutting out Georgia Southwestern, the women took on the USC Aiken Pacers in a conference match October 13th. The Falcons outpaced the Pacers, winning the game 2-1. Sophomore Brittany Woodhouse scored the game-winning goal, making it her third score in two games. The women faced Georgia College at home on October 20th at 1 p.m. The Falcons then host Columbus State on the 24th at 4 p.m. We'd also like to congratulate Taylor Kerr of the women's soccer team for being named the Peach Belt Conference Goalkeeper of the Week. Kerr took, took over as starting goalkeeper midway through the season after Caitlin Thomas went out with an injury. Kerr has racked up 20 saves in the last four games since she took over as goalkeeper. We would also like to congratulate Brendan Ledgeway of the men's soccer team for picking up the title of PBC Goalkeeper of the Week for the third time this season and for the sixth time in the past two years. What a great job both Taylor and Brennan are doing. They're just representing Falcon soccer teams excellently. That's exactly right. Congratulations to the both of you. Moving to cross country, the Falcons are preparing to host this upcoming PBC championship races the week, this weekend. And for the women's team, it is their chance to defend their title as the reigning PBC champs. Last year's PBC championship was held in Aiken, South Carolina. The women's team flew by the competition to take first place. Meanwhile, the men finished seventh. Head coach Tommy Barksdale says having home track advantage is a great bonus for his team, and he hopes that UM students will come out to support the team. The Falcons lace up their running shoes this Saturday, October 20th. The men's race begins at 9 a.m., and the women are set to begin at 9.45. In volleyball news, after splitting their home doubleheader, the Falcons look to keep their new momentum going in back-to-back -back road games against PBC opponents. October 12th, the Falcons traveled to South Carolina for a matchup with Francis Marion. The team couldn't overcome a slow start. Sophomore Michelle Walker made nine kills and junior Kaylee Harvey had 19 digs, but the Falcons just couldn't get the win, losing to the Patriots in straight sets. Then, on October 13th, the team visited UNC Pembroke, where they regained their offense and dominated the Braves from the start, winning in straight sets. Michelle Walker led the Falcons with 14 kills and three blocks. Freshman Brianna Marquez made a team record with 34 assists. As of showtime this Wednesday, the Falcons are getting ready to host Stillman College tonight at Bank Trust Arena at 6. 
This match is part of their fourth annual Dig Pink match, benefiting breast cancer research. All money raised during the match will be donated to the Breast Cancer Research Foundation. The team then goes on the road for matches with Augusta State on October 23rd and USC Aiken on October 26th. The men's golf team is preparing to wrap up their fall schedule, and the women have already put away their clubs until the spring. The women ended their fall schedule at the Patsy Rendleman Invitational in South Carolina. The women finished 11th out of 16 teams. Sophomore Ashley Beck led the Falcons, coming in 25th place out of 87 competitors. The men are hoping for a strong finish for their fall schedule, and the two tournaments they played in, they finished first and third respectively. Junior Connor Godsey tied for second in the last match, the Indian Bayou Classic in Destin, Florida. And that brings us to this week's Player of the Week. This week's Player of the Week is golf standout Connor Godsey from the golf team. And Jolene Hanna joins us right now with his story. Now, from what I understand, Connor has had a pretty good past couple of weeks. That's right, guys. I got a chance to talk to Connor last week and ask him about his success this season. Connor is from an athletic background and says his, his success comes from hard work, the hard work that he's put into golf. When did you start playing golf? Um, I guess between my seventh and eighth grade years. Um, I played baseball my life, but then we couldn't try out. For, they, there wasn't a junior high team at my school, so we couldn't try out for that. So I just started playing golf and never looked back. This summer you won the Alabama Open, and then here recently you played second in the Indian Bayou Classic. Tell me about that. Um, well, at the Alabama Open, um, I'd been playing really well leading up to it. Uh, I kind of felt like I was due. I mean, I, I had a pretty good summer, but uh, the Alabama Open was the was the biggest tournament that I won for sure. And uh, I mean, it felt really well. And then going down to Destin for the Indian Bayou, uh, I had been working on it really hard and I felt good about my game and uh, kind of got off to a slow start the first day, but battled back and shot a decent score and then um, play pretty well the second day and to uh, get in a playoff. You seem to be playing really well this season. What's your secret? I've, I've worked really, really hard at it and I, mean, I guess it's fan off, but just hard work, that's it. I know you're from an athletic family. Um, does that kind of help you as an athlete some? Oh yeah, for sure. Um, I saw my sister when I was growing up, she worked really hard at basketball and she did pretty well at basketball. So I, I saw really what it took to to be good at something. I mean, you got to work at it. And I learned that from my sister and from my parents as well. Thank you, Connor Godsey, our Falcon Fever Player of the Week. If anyone has any suggestions for Falcon Fever Player of the Week, let us know. And con congratulations to Connor on all of his success this season. Thanks, Jolyn. The men's golf team returns this gr to the green later this month. The men will part take part in the West Georgia Invitational at the Oak Mountain Championship Golf Club in Carrollton, Georgia. This brings us to the part of the show where we get to thank our fans. That's right, Michael. This week's Falcon Fever Fan of the Week is Elliot, Elliot Barnwell. Elliot is a student at Sanford University where he is on the tennis team. Thanks, Elliot, for showing your support to our show. Oh, he plays tennis, huh? Well, I'll have to challenge him in a tennis match probably later this week to see just how far his skills go. I don't know. He looks like he's pretty good at tennis. He probably is, but hey, we'll see. <laughs> we'll see. For more UM Sports coverage, you can get in on all the Falcon Fever action on YouTube and through social media. You can watch current and past episodes of Falcon Fever on YouTube. Just search for Montevallo for you. Also, add us as a friend on Facebook. There you'll find links to sports stories throughout the week and live updates from the games. You can also leave us a comment, talk about recent games, or give a shout out to your favorite UM athlete. You can also follow us on Twitter. Just search for UM Falcon Fever. And if you do, leave us a comment or tweet at us. We might just give you a shout out on our next show. And last but not least, get extended UM Sports coverage on all Montebello Falcon sports at MontebelloFalcons.com. There you'll find rosters, live stats, pictures, and more. Are you looking forward to any games that are coming up this week? I am. I'm looking forward to the cross country team hosting the PBC championship this weekend. That's really great for the university. I'm really excited about the basketball season starting up. That is going to be uh, something I'm marking on my calendar for sure. So I can't wait for that. Exactly. Well, that's all the time we have for this week's show. I'm Michael Artris. And I'm Casey Beasley. Until next time.